This short video will show how to assemble a VL7 V-Lift. This is how the lift is shipped and how you'll receive it. Uh, assembly is straightforward with two people. It takes about an hour. All the components are shipped in three boxes. The batteries are in box A. Box B contains the instructions and all the electric components. And box C is the tubular components. It's very important to charge the batteries as the first thing. You, they can be daisy chains together. Make sure they click and plugged in. The light will be red as it's fast charging and it will turn to green when it goes to trickle charge and they're fully charged. First step is to assemble the tanks by placing any two tanks together and then offsetting the hinges so the axle will align easier. Insert the axle through the hinges. Lift one tank and then press the hinges together. On the end with the short axle, a ring and a pin and a locking cotter ring. Make sure the axle ring is inserted over the axle and attempt to get the holes lined vertically. We're rolling. Assemble the second pair of tanks just like the first. Position the two tank pairs so the longer end of the axle with the half moons are facing each other. Next slide the axle ring over the axle on both tank pairs. Note that on one side there are three holes and on the other side there's two holes. On the union, identify the end with two holes and for easy alignment, place a pin in the second hole and slide the union into the axle up to the half holes. Then remove the alignment pin and place through the axle and insert the locking ring. Next, insert the bellows over the union. And compress past the third hole and insert a pin. The first is used for this standard VL7 assembly. The other hole is used for a tighter than normal tank spacing or a VL11. Make sure that the axle ring is inserted over the axle. Oops. Next, push the tank pairs together over the union, up to the pin. If the holes do not align, pull the tank pairs apart and correct the alignment. To align the axle, insert a long pin, slightly lift one tank and rotate the axle. Now slide the tanks together so the half holes slide up to the pin. It's very important to remember to remove the alignment pin and place it in the hole up next to the hinge. With the tanks attached, it is important to inspect that both pins are inserted. The bunk, inner bunk and the hardware are stored underneath the lid. The lift has two different pin lengths, a four inch pin for the axles and the seats, and a five inch pin for the inner bunks. We'll assemble the inner bunks. Simply place the leg in the bunk and insert the longer pin. Add the ring to lock the pin in place. The placement of this seat should be high or the, with the bunk low for a V-hole boat. And it's better to start with it too low than too high. For an inboard or a ski boat, tournament boats, you'll want the bunk placed high enough to give enough clearance for the rudder and the propeller. The 
inner bunks will get placed in the center square holes. Note that the vents, they will angle down to the aft. This anti-folding clip fits in over the axle between the tanks and prevents it from folding in when it's in the water. Depending on how it sits on the land, it may not fit until you place it in the water. To keep the lift in proper position, this brace goes around one leg and braces off the other, but we'll wait to install this until the lift is in the water. The next step is to fasten the outer bunks to the tank. Note there's one, two, three, four positions that this can be installed. A majority of boats will have this in the second position. The hardware will be shipped located underneath the cover. Note that it doesn't need to be taken apart fully if the wing nut's off and the knob is loosened. Pull apart the large washers. Slid right. Without tools, torque down with the wing nut used as a lock nut. So when the valve is taken out of the box, there'll be some packing plastic. Remove the plastic. Take some of the existing lubrication and make sure spread it around on the OD of the each O-ring. Insert the up valves in the hole labeled up with light pressure. All right, repeat the same for the down valve. The TMS tank monitoring sensor will go in first. Again, only light pressure is needed. Next, the blower will go on the up valve. First, connect the wires and note they're a two pin wire. Not to be confused with the four pin or the three pin. The blower will go on the up valve and rest on the cradle with the ear on the outboard side. Next, complete the same procedure for the other three tanks. For saltwater applications, use cor corrosion spray on the blower, on the motor stator, and lightly into the fan. The batteries will go on the aft tanks in the battery tray. Before putting in the batteries, insert the battery hold down hooks. Insert the battery in the tray with the harness away from the blower. And insert the battery hold down strap under the hooks. Repeat for the opposite tank. This is the remote control unit with the serial number label on the top, off and on switches, and up and down rocker switch on the front. On this end are the plugs for the batteries marked with a red band. There is a key switch used to enable and disable the rocker switch for up and down. There's a program button for the key fob transmitter, an indicator light for low battery, plugs for LED accessory that goes on the lift, and this cord is for a communication cable used with the VL11. On the opposite side are four leads that go to each of the four tanks. Next, install the short harness that goes between the RC and the blowers. The six pin plug can go to any four of the leads on the RC. And the three plugs on the other side of the harness, the three pin goes to the blower, the four pin goes to the down valve and TMS sensor. And the third plug is for the charger, which goes unused if there's no charger hooked to this specific tank. And position the plugs and wires above the level of the valves. And route, now route this cable under the strap and connect to the RC. 
it's very important to have both batteries hooked up so one battery is not overdrawn and blows a fuse. Harness to the RC. Again, run underneath the bunks to the opposite tank. Last, connect the, the two long six pin harnesses from the forward tanks under the bunks, across the union, and back up to the RC. And at the bottom of the groove, there's a hole and a zip tie in the hardware kit. For the, R, the tank with the RC, there'll be a, a, a zip tie on the, that needs to be moved. And for the center, two harnesses, they can be zipped down as well. Now before installing the lift and the launching the lift, it's best to test it on land. See the blower's working and it's drawing suction, so this valve is working. To test the down valve, you can actually feel if the valve is open. So the charger is designed to go on the dock with a cable that runs to the lift and can be plugged into any of the green plugs. So there'll be one at the end of each harness on each tank, plus two additional ones on each battery. Any plug will charge the entire system. The covers will be placed over the studs. And the knobs tighten down.